Hi guys, my name is Kai Hendry. I've been using Linux for well over 15 years now. And I thought I'd just brain dump to you what little I know about updates. So this is based around uh, Greg Crow Hartman, a Linux developer maintainer, his blog post. So he points out, rightly so, that that every every update to the kernel is a security fix. So you really should update to it. Um, and he also explains the way uh, how stable and long-term support kernels work. So in terms of updates, let me just break it down in terms of desktop computers, server class machines, and mobiles. So essentially, on the desktop world, I use Linux uh, on Arch, and almost daily there's a Linux update. And what does that mean? That means I need to reboot my machine. And for me, to be honest, it's it's not a huge conven convenience. I'm using Sifton D. My machine boots quite fast. Um, but uh, you know, sometimes I do a packet a Pac-Man update. I update a whole bunch of packages that m maybe I want. And then the kernel comes in there too, and then I go, oh, I have to reboot now, uh, and I and I resist. But with Arch, um, they replace the modules. So if you try to, um, if you load a new module in adversity, like plugging in a new device, you will find it won't work until you reboot. Typically, Void Linux doesn't replace the 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 Linux modules until until reboot. So. Just for just for the newbies out there, you get the the Linux kernel and then the modules, which are like little library binaries that get loaded in in and out, and I guess to keep the footprint low and and all sorts of stuff like that. <clears throat> now, I don't have a huge problem rebooting on desktop, but where it does become a problem is that if you rely on you know, typically. You know, video or open, uh, you know, special graphics hardware. Nvidia is a, is is the is the typical perpetrator. You know, they they don't. You know, since software is hardware nowadays, they don't have uh, open. They haven't opened their uh, software. So all these hardware compatibilities in the PC world, which are sort of inevitable, just get the factor of them happening with with binary uh, you know proprietary stuff it just goes up so it, the end user experience is that you could reboot your machine and it's completely hosed you know you can't get into your graphical user interface um, and that's a pretty terrible experience so typically in, in my in my world I would um, go in there and maybe downgrade downgrade roll back to um, uh, an earlier Linux kernel using Pac-Man, and 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 basically fix the problem from there. It's, it's not that hard, but it, I can understand why people think of desktop Linux being broken like this, or have that sort of experience, and then they they you know are afraid to use it. But it's not it's not a biggie. Um, what what are the potential solutions? Well. Well, Chrome OS is interesting because they have like this like dual partition thing. So if you fail to boot, you roll back to the old partition. Um, that's the main thing. Um, also, uh, Core OS, which I'll talk about later, does the same thing. That's more of a desktop OS. And, uh, and Nix OS has something like this too. Another thing that Chrome OS do, do actually is that they they target particular hardware, so they know this particular hardware is going to work with their with their OS. So, so basically, their their reboots are sort of guaranteed to work. But let's let's put that aside. So, I, yeah, I think I think the solution. It would be nice if there was something. I mean, there are things like Kexec, which have technology to sort of uh, reload the kernel without rebooting, but. Ultimately, I've never got them to work satisfactorily. I, I mean, if you know better, please let me know. I, you basically always have to reboot. Um, but and it, and it would be nice if um, Arch could support rollback. Another honorable mention is the operating system. I, I maintain Web Converger. The whole root of is in Git, so it's fairly easy to roll back. 
So yeah, solution in my mind for desktop operating systems, and uh, an, an easier way for for people to to roll back. Now the next class of uh, of of, uh, of Linux kernel is is obviously LTS for for servers, and you know, and there's so many things that run Linux that are pretty important, like um, like you know, Microtik networking hardware. So. In my ideal world, I would like my my my, ne my networking hardware to re to to auto update, but you can't have that realistically because you need to schedule maintenance windows. You know, you can't just update in the middle of a working day because it might be destructive. So uh, it will, will be destructive. I mean, is it is there a chance of it rebooting and then it just just not working? There's a there is a chance, but I, I would argue it's a very 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 small chance. So I wouldn't be pedantic like that. But at the same, but the most important thing with servers is that you just don't want downtime. The typical solution is um, is the one I use in like an AWS way. I, I usually have two servers running, and I have a load balancer maintained by AWS, and they keep that machine patched or somehow. And, and basically, when it hits my two instances, I I I I, I now have the, the the opportunity to update one, uh, and have the other one serving requests. And then when it's um, updated, then I update that one, and then then they're both updated. And I don't I don't drop any requests. So that's the solution on the server side sort of things. It's basically handling downtime. Now mobiles, as as Greg points out is a whole different kettle of fish. It's kind of like a much worse desktop version because typically all these mobile Android vendors, they they have these long cycles where they're integrating their their proprietary hardware with the Linux kernel. And this takes, and, and, and they test it, make sure it's great, but they don't r realistically contribute the, those those drivers um, back into the, into Linux kernel very quickly, or they can't because you know exposing their software might break some NDAs or something like that. So basically, they have these very long cycles of integrating their 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 stuff, and they they, they obviously have to choose an older uh, end up having to target an older kernel. And then the worst thing is then once they're all done, they typically don't support it. So. <laughs> So basically, your 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 Linux embedded device is probably not supported very well, and it has a limited life. Um, well, what is the solution for this problem? Uh, it doesn't look very good. Well, I guess as I mentioned, if if the hardware was somehow more compatible or something like that, uh, making the risk of of uh, Having a new, you know, I, I, yeah. If if all the drivers were point were ported into the Linux kernel, the and someone maintaining those ports, I, I I doubt there would be an issue going forward. But unfortunately, no one's doing that, as far as I know. I mean, or very few people are doing that. I mean, please, if I'm wrong, let me know. So. Embedded devices, you know, Internet of Things is kind of a depressing landscape, if you ask me. I, you know, since embedded stuff is quite esoteric, you know, quite particular. Yeah, if they don't, if things don't get really open on 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 mobile, I, I, yeah, the future doesn't look great. So to summarize, I hope you will read um, Greg. Hartman blog. I hope you'll comment below, pointing out how wrong I am. Um, and, and yeah, I, I I do wish Linux updates were a little bit smoother. Um, and I'm sure over time they will, but it's, it's a very hard nut to crack, isn't it? Thanks for watching. Please like the video. Please subscribe. Why don't you? And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.